right. Uh, kind of picking up. Sorry to lay down. Just a quick reminder that the gateway science brief that was scheduled. All right, third time's the charm, I guess. So yesterday we took a kind of simple, just did conversions, right? Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit to it and then we're gonna get into graphing logs. Graphing logs can be extremely weird at first. I'll tell you that, um, just kind of getting into it. And then it should kind of clear up towards the end of today. And tomorrow all we're gonna do is practice our graphing logs. So we'll have two kind of days to nail this down. Um, so finishing up kind of yesterday is a couple small things. In order to use a calculator to solve log functions, you're going to need a base of 10. So your base is a natural base of 10. And that will allow us to use our calculator when we start solving it. In order to use your calculator to solve natural log functions, which is the ln, it has a natural base of e. So we talked about rewriting how they're um, inverses of each other. So the basic ones we did yesterday, you should be able to do something like 2. Remember, it goes from here to here to here. Kind of makes an E if you use your imagination. So it would be 2 to the fifth power is equal to 32. If there's nothing written there that's got a natural base of 10, throwing that in there. So 10 squared is equal to 2. Same thing, 13 to the first power is equal to 13. If it's an ln, a natural log, it's got a natural base of E. Same thing here. That's the only thing I want to throw in there today. So if there's no base written, if it's a log, we're going to have a base of 10. Kind of like the square. It's got that little two there that you don't remember. If it's a natural log, it's a base of E. Now rewriting from exponential to, what's up? Yeah. What did I put two? I don't know. There you go, hundred percent right. Ten squared is not equal to two. All right, so that should be pretty straightforward. Y'all did great yesterday with your quizzes and everything. Now, uh, that's one way to do it. I don't like teaching the little e method because that's a big stretch, even for my bad handwriting to say that's an e. Um, the other way is doing the other, the opposite. So if I'm coming here an exponent, this one makes more sense. You can make the block l. If you come down here through there, comes down here. Kind of get you an L. That kind of makes sense. So going exponential to log, we got log base five of one is equal to zero. Log base two of 16 is equal to four. Now with an E, all we're gonna write is natural log. So instead of a log, we're gonna do natural log. 54.598 is equal to four. And right now, if you want to put the E there, you can. You don't have to. And then natural log of the last one of one is equal to zero. So if you're writing that natural log, that's the only time you're going to write it is with an E. We'll use it later when we start solving things, but most of the time it's going to be with the E. Does anybody have any questions on that? Pretty straightforward. I did great with this yesterday. I was, I was happy. All right. If you need me to go back, I'll be glad to. You still need it. You're, you're writing things down. Let me pause this so it's not going. It's like choppy videos. Hello. So funny inverse here. So kind of lean into what we got. So I can rewrite this as y equals four to the x power. Remember, f of x is just the fancy way of writing y. So remember to find an inverse first. We're going to change our x's to y. So I get, what's that? x equals 4 to the y power now. So rewrite this. So how would I rewrite this exponent in log form? I would have log base of what? Four. What's the big number of? X is equal to Y, right? So remember here, if I have Y equals so four X is equal to Y, just to help you make it sense. You get your L that way if you're drawing the picture. So what I know here, my inverse, 
is equal to log base four of X. So this is just a fancy math way of showing you here the inverses. So if I have this and this exponents are inverses of logs. So our graphs, what we're gonna end up doing is X is gonna switch places with our Y's. So that's gonna be our whole kind of focus today. We've already done graphing with exponents. So now we're gonna switch gears and kind of graph a little bit with logs. I'm gonna kind of break it down slowly today and then we'll practice the rest of today and tomorrow. All right, so let's go back. You can read that. I'm not gonna stop zooming. So the key is to remember that a log is just the inverse of a function. So just like dividing undoes multiplication, logs are gonna undo exponents. That means they are inverses of each other. So the graphs are also flipped over the line y equals x, which means that all the x values and y values in the corresponding characteristics are flipped. So we'll show you, we'll talk about the difference here. So with the exponential here, f of x equals four to the x power. So remember what I would do here, a basic, so we chose zero and one for our x's, right? So that would give me anything to zero power is one, four to the first power is four. So zero, one was a point and one, four was a point. That's wrong, zero, one. And one, four. So I had that, remember you had your asymptote at zero. So kind of going through this kind of quickly, your domain is all your X's, your range was all your Y's. So remember my domain was all real numbers. My range was zero to infinity. Asymptote Y equals zero. And then as X approaches negative infinity, my function approached the Y asymptote, so zero. And as X approach positive infinity, the right side, it goes up. Just a quick sketch. All right. I know I went kind of quick through that. So I can get over here to the logs. So now the log, if I have log base four of X, what you're gonna do here, We are switching our X's and Y's because that's the definition of an inverse. It's a pretty cool skyline. So X's and Y's. So here the difference is now I got zero and one for my Y's and that gave me one and four for my X's. So the points I have here are one zero and then four one. And it's gonna graph like this. Oops, too far, too many dots. Okay. All right. I'm gonna pause this really quick. I'm gonna run over to death. So just showing you the difference here. Um, if I look here, that was my exponential function, right? I have my two points that I had, I had zero, one, and I had one, four. And you can see how they're both on the graph. Come on, you're not gonna work for me, are you? All right, now, if I did this, this is the change of base formula. Um, we'll learn that later in the year. But if you look here, I have one zeros on here. And then I also have four one is on here if you get close enough, so you can see the graph. And then if you look at y equals x, all inverses are a reflection of the two. So you can kind of see that the red, if I fold it over the green, I get the blue, right? So it changes a little bit different. Everything's kind of flip-flop, but I want to show you a pictorial representation so you can see what's really going on. All right, now the difference here, everything is switched. Your x values change to your y values, right? So what I know here is domain and range are gonna get flip-flopped. So instead of my range being all, or my domain being all real numbers, my range is gonna be all real numbers here. 
because it goes down forever and up forever. My domain, how far left does it go? It goes to zero. How far right does it go? It goes to infinity. That's why I want you to understand how to find it as opposed to just memorizing things. So remember, domain is how far left and how far right does it go? So this one goes left forever, or sorry, goes left to the asymptote, which is at zero and stops. So it goes right forever, so zero to infinity. My range goes down forever and up forever, so it is all real numbers. My asymptote, it's a vertical line. So instead of y equals zero, it's now x equals zero. And my end behavior is going to be a little bit weird now because my x's and y's are going to flip. So now here's the difference. As x approaches zero, that's the left side now, right? That's as far left as the graph can go. So x can't approach negative infinity. It can only approach zero. Do we see that? So as it approaches zero, my function's going down. So it's going to negative infinity. And then as my x goes to the right, it approaches positive infinity. Did too many arrows, I got arrow happy. So as my x goes to the right side, so it's going to the right, my function's going up. And we got our different characteristics. Now you can sit back and look at them. And now your left side is going to approach the vertical asymptote instead of infinity. So just looking and you can sit back and take a look at these and see that the X's and Y's throughout these whole things that the inverses are flip flop. They're back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. All right. No questions. All right, let's break down some of these graphs. So I got my general, still got my general function. Y is equal to A times the log base B of X minus H plus K. Same thing. H is going to shift it left and right. K is still going to shift it up and down. A is still going to stretch it and reflect it. Okay. Now I just have my log base B is going to be my basic. So First of all, I want to start with the vertical asymptote. So to find the vertical asymptote, we set x equal to the value of h. So we're looking inside here. So that's what's going to give you my vertical asymptote. So here, I got log base 2 of x minus 3, so I'm looking here. So my vertical asymptote, x is going to equal to what? 3. So it's opposite because it's inside parentheses. We're looking in here. So x is going to be equal to 4. x is going to be equal to negative 2. I'm not adding anything here. So x is going to be equal to 0 because I'm not adding or subtracting anything inside. So with exponentials, it's the number on the outside. It's your k value. With logs, it's the number on the inside. It is your h value. All right, so graphing here in the graph log functions, we've got a few steps. So first, we're going to draw in the asymptote. Second, we're going to determine two key coordinates. We're going to start with x equals 1 and b, and then y is equal to 0 and 1. That usually helps. Sketch your graph, the coordinate is close to the asymptote. We'll tell you it's top or bottom of the graph approaches the vertical asymptote. And we'll talk about that once we get there. Cool. I don't like reading stuff. All right, so let's kind of break this one down. If I go too fast, yell at me. All right, so what is the parent function? That is just your basic. So just like we did with exponents. So log base two of x. What's my vertical asymptote going to be here? Perfect. X equals negative one. So it's a line. Let's go ahead and write that. X equals negative one. Okay. Still with me? All right. What are my transformations? 
We should be good at these. What does this do? Okay, left one. What does this do? Down three. Those should be second nature right now, right? I can say that with confidence, I hope. I know some of y'all that have me in geometry, you got nothing to, we did that enough. I gotta get you next semester too. I don't know, I think you want somebody else. All right, here's the difference in these kind of graphs. So let's get our basic table. And kind of what it says above. So I, I wrote above, it says determine two key coordinates. So start with X is equal to one and B and Y is equal to zero and one. So X is equal to one. And then my B value is two. Okay. So X is equal to one. And then my B value, my base was two. So that's how I got the two numbers. So one, and then my base is two. And that will always make your Y's zero and one. When we start solving logs, that part will make sense. But what that does is I have log base two of one. If the log of one is anything to get that one there, it has to be equal to zero. Okay, that's why we do that. So if you put one there, your answer has to be zero. And then two to what power is gonna give you two? And that's always one. So that's why we're choosing one and B. Now we're going left one and we're going down three. So my new points here are zero, negative three, and one, negative two. So zero, negative three, and one, negative two. And you can see how it's gonna go this way. I got double purple, that worked out terribly. And we got our sketch. Cool. All right, now let's walk through our characteristics. Again, I don't like memorizing things. So how far left does this go? Okay, it goes to negative one, right? How far right does the graph go? Pause infinity, it goes forever, right? I ask myself the same questions every time. So that way I don't have to worry about memorizing things. So it's how far left and how far right. Range is how far down and then how far up. So how far down is this graph going? Perfect. Negative infinity, how far up? So negative infinity, positive infinity, or all random numbers, right? You don't have to write them both. I just do. All right, now, sit back and look at it. Is this graph increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. All right, if I start here, I start on the left side. As I move my graph to the right, is it going up or down? It's going up, so this is increasing, okay? That's how you can tell. So start on the left side of your graph and then just trace it to the right. Is your pencil going up or down? That's how you can tell if it's increasing or decreasing. So this one is increasing and that's gonna be the whole domain. And then lastly, in behavior. So remember this is different. As X approaches your asymptote, so negative one, my function is going down. And then as X goes to the right, my function is going up. It's a little bit different type of in behavior, but all of the rest of the characteristics are still the same. Cool. All right, let's look at another one. I'm not gonna do all of these examples, that's a lot. I'll do this page and then turn you loose. Where's the natural law in the back? I'll do a natural law. All right, so here my parent function is gonna be the basic one, this one. So I got log base one half of X. We're walking through this. What is my vertical asymptote here? Remember your vertical asymptote is this number now, right? 
So x is equal to three. A little bit different. What are my two transformations? Okay. Wow, that is not how you spell right. Right three and up one, perfect. So remember getting my chart here. I'm gonna do one and then my base. So one and one half are gonna be my X's here. And that's always gonna give me zero and one. So I'm gonna go right three and up one. So I got four, one, and I got 3.52. So four, one, 3.52. So that shows me my graph's gonna look like this this time. Since my base is one half that's smaller than one, it's gonna flip, it's gonna decrease now. All right, I got my sketch, so now I can just answer all my questions. So my domain is gonna be three to infinity. My range is all real numbers. My intervals, this is now gonna decrease. And then as X approaches three, my function's doing something. And as X approaches infinity, my function's doing something. So as I get closer to the asymptote, it's going up. So it's gonna to go to infinity. And this is gonna be negative infinity. So it just flip flops. All right, I'm gonna give you a hint on five, I'm gonna skip it. Um, there's no base written here. So if there's no base, what's the base gonna equal? 10. So base equals 10 whenever it's not written. So your X and your Y's, you do one and 10 and zero and one. It's kind of a hint, you can do the rest. I wanna to skip to an E so I'm not talking the whole time. And if you practice that and need me to come back, I'll be glad to go back and work it for you. All right, which one do we wanna do? Six or seven? Uh, six, cause it's got the natural log. Seven's got a bunch of transformations, but it's okay. So let's just take a look at six with a natural log and then I can turn you loose. So remember natural log has a base of what? Base of E. Remember E is roughly 2.72. Just some stuff to throw in your brain a little bit. So my parent function here is the natural log of X. My vertical asymptote, X is gonna be equal to two. It's the opposite what's in the parentheses here. What are my transformations? All right, we're gonna go up four. And that's this one. What's this one gonna do? It's gonna go right two. So in my table, I'm gonna do zero and I'm gonna do E, which is 2.72. And that's gonna give me zero and one. Sorry, I'm not gonna do zero and 2.72. I'm gonna do one and 2.72. It's always one in your base, one in your base. So now I'm gonna go right two and up four. So I got three, four to plot and I got 2.72, 4.72 and five. So come over here and get my sketch. So X equals two. And I can plot these points to so three, four. 4.72 is a guess, about there and there. And you got your sketch. All right, then if I come over here, fill in the gaps, my domain, 
2 to infinity, range is all real numbers. Intervals, it's increasing over your domain. And then as x approaches 2, my function's going down. And then as x approaches positive infinity, my function's going up. Cool. Uh, pause for a sec. All right, here's what I want you to do. Uh, on your own, I want you to go ahead and do five and seven. Okay, I'm gonna work them out up here. I'm gonna pause it. That way I'll give you your solutions. You can check them. And then uh, your homework tonight, I think it's just eight graphs. I cut off the rewriting part from your homework, so it's not much. Um, you can just do a few of those just to make sure you got the hang of it. Cool? And so I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. I'll put the answers up in a second. Um, but for your practice, the notes, the answers to your graphing are online. So you can check your answers to make sure you're doing it right. Or you can ask me before you leave. Okay? All right. I'll let this roll. I just want to talk to it. Yeah. Maybe not. All right. Here's the answers to your last two. That was a little blurry. I can zoom in on it if you want me to. Or you can on the video. Um, but that is it for today. So check your work. You got practice. And we will practice again tomorrow. So talk to you later.